Hello everyone and welcome to another incredible game that was played in round 4 or rather in the tiebreaks of round 4 of this year's FIDE World Cup. It is Pregnananda vs Hikaru Nakamura and this is the second game of their match. I'm pretty sure you've already heard what happened and you've seen the first game and most likely the second one. Uh, but so many of you are requesting it. Uh, I mean it's uh, I mean, it's just a, a privilege to watch uh, classical chess being played like this because... Uh, well, uh, uh, for those of you who still haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil too much. Uh, but it was basically... Uh, like like taking a, a, a stroll through the park. Uh, so we're going to discuss this a little bit later. Uh, but uh, Prague won the first game. He already trapped Hikaru's piece on move 9. H Hikaru blundered terribly. Uh, Prague Nananda took advantage of that. He defeated him very nicely. And now Hikaru needs to bounce back uh, in order to... Um, uh, well, to force further tie breaks. So let's check it out. Uh, Prague has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to d6, uh, we have d4 and pawn to g6. Hikaru opts for the modern defense or the, or the robash defense. We have knight to f3 and bishop to g7. We have bishop to c4. Uh, Prague wasn't really um, stressed out by this uh, modern defense idea by Hikaru. He probably was expecting it as Hikaru does tend to use it from time to time when he is in a must win situation so probably Prague was prepared for even that knight to c6 and now pawn to h3 we have knight to f6 and now queen to e2 uh, pawn to e5 and now d captures on e5 and Prague was very happy going into this position I can only imagine as he defeated none other than Magnus Carlsen from this exact same position uh, in the crypto uh, FTX crypto cup in uh, last year uh, but Magnus continued with knight captures on e5 here Hikaru deviates from the Magnus game he plays d captures on e5 and now there is a game where c3 was played but here Prague just castles and it is now already as of move 8 that we have a completely new game now this is a great position for white but Hikaru is in a must win situation so he's also definitely happy with a completely new game already on move 8 we have castles by Hikaru as well rook to d1 attacking Hikaru's queen and now bishop to d7 we have knight to c3 going for that the d5 square and queen to c8 unpinning from the rook on the d file bishop to g5 and now rook to e8 Prague goes knight to d5 as all trades favor him it's uh I mean he already won the first game, he only needs a draw in the second one. And now, if this wasn't a must-win situation, probably Hikaru would just capture, uh, and then after bishop or, or pawn captures, go knight to a5. The game continues, it's a nice position for both white and black. But as he is in a must-win situation, he goes for knight to h5. Uh, queen to d2, now trying to take advantage of the dark squares, um, as the knight no longer uh, attacks the knight on d5 or the pawn on e4. And now bishop to e6. Uh, just, uh, uh, you know, get, getting more, uh, well, more uh, more of a better square for the bishop. Bishop to b5 by Prague and now pawn to f6 with bishop to h6 and king to h8. And here Prague trades. Bishop captures with king captures and queen to c3 now. Nicely aligning with the queen with the black king here. Bishop back to d7 and now rook to d2. Prague now ready to double up on the d-file. As Hikaru by playing bishop to d7, he did put it on a bit of an awkward square. Once this rook comes to d1, it's going to put pressure uh, on, on the d-file. So a6 and now bishop to a4. We have pawn to b5 by Hikaru and just bishop to b3. So uh, now controlling this diagonal, this diagonal and the knight is brilliantly placed here on d5. So you can see uh, uh, how, how different of an approach it is uh, from when Magnus lost his game to Vincent he played a really really long grueling game in order to bounce back but Hikaru decided to just go all out here we have rook to a7 and rook a to d1 and now yeah, okay you can just allow the knights to move and your bishop to um, uh, be, uh, get under attack so knight to b8 by Hikaru defending the bishop but the game is already lost Prague is completely winning here and as he already won the first game this means that he is now ready to kick out uh, Hikaru from the world chess champion uh, from the uh, FIDE world cup uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find the move that uh, uh, wins the game for Prague while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on spotting that the rook on a7 is undefended. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to c5. It's not just because the rook on a7 is undefended, but because uh, you, you also gain access to the e7 square. And now the problem is, how do you defend here? You can defend the rook by moving the rook or by actually defending the rook. Now, moving the rook looks nice uh, until you see knight to e7 attacking the black queen 
And now after queen to d8, there's this beautiful knight to c6. And now of course the bishop cannot capture because the rook captures queen. And once, uh, or uh, if you capture with the knight, then you, you've removed the defender of the bishop. So just rook captures on d7. So queen has to go back and now you just eliminate the knight here. And next you eliminate the bishop and that's it, game over. So Hikaru had to go for the other line, that is queen to b7. Uh, but it doesn't help him as Prague finds this beautiful pawn to g4 which traps the knight on h5. It doesn't just trap the knight, you might uh, be thinking, well, what about knight to f4? Uh, sure, knight to f4, you, you can just capture it, or you can even play knight captures on f6, it doesn't really matter, because then <laughs> rook captures on d7, uh, I mean, so many lines here are winning, it's, it's hard to find a move here, even knight captures on h3 with check can be played, uh, you're gonna play king to h2, attack the knight, and now, how do you defend this? The, the, the bishop here is hanging, the rook is hanging, also the rooks are attacking the bishop, the knight is hanging, this is just dead lost for uh, Hikaru, so instead after g4, c6 was played, and here Hikaru knew he was already uh, not just lost in this game but also out of the FIDE World Cup uh, he played it very quickly he didn't even look at the position all that much uh, Prague played knight to b6 which is also the strongest move recommended by the engine putting up uh, a triple attack here on the bishop on d7 knight to f4 by Hikaru and now just knight captures on d7 we have pawn to a5 uh, not much you can do here knight captures on b8 rook captures and now queen captures on a7 again so many winning ideas here you could play knight captures on e5 f captures queen captures attack the king the knight uh, but this just ends the game on the spot uh, queen captures on a7 rook to d7 check even with a temporary po uh, queen sacrifice Queen captures, rook captures with check, and now king to h6. Hikaru uh, is no longer uh, even playing this game. He is uh, merely coming to terms with this new reality that he is eliminated from the FIDE World Cup. g5 check by Prague with f captures and knight captures on e5. He, uh, now Prague is up a full piece, but of course he still has to play very precise moves uh, because if anyone can come back from a dead loss position, it is definitely Hikaru, and he will try. Uh, pawn to g4 with h captures, king to g5 now. Uh, pawn to f3, just not allowing him any chances, pawn to h5, we have captures, captures, and now knight to d3, offering a trade of knights, we have a4 attacking the bishop, and bishop to f7 by Prague, h4, Hikaru does have the past h pawn, so it could be a, a little bit unpleasant, but now king to h2, we have knight to e2, and now bishop to e6. Uh, we have pawn to b4 by Hikaru, rook to f7, and now knight to d4, attacking the bishop, but f4 with check, king to h6, and bishop to f5, uh, sorry, after f4 check, king to h6, bishop to f5, and he was in this position on move 41 that Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, you are faced with checkmate here, and if you want to avoid checkmate, you have to give up one of your pieces, and you really don't want to do that since you're already down a piece, and after he captures, there's just no move you can play. This is covered by the pawn, this is covered by the pawn, by the rook, by the rook, and, uh, well, you're just gonna get checkmate or whatever you play. You can even allow black to bring a queen into the game, it's that funny. Let's say knight to e5, a captures on b2, almost bringing a queen into the game, knight g4 check, king to h5, knight f6 check, king to h6, and now rook to h7 will be checkmate. It's okay, almost bringing a queen into the game. Uh, but everything, absolutely everything loses here for Hikaru. So that's what I meant uh, at the beginning of the video, that it, was, uh, it, it wasn't it was a walk in the park, of course, beating Hikaru is no walk in the park, but the way Prague defeated him in the first game and in the second game, uh, he definitely made it seem like it was a walk in the park. So brilliant stuff by Pragnananda uh, going into the, the final 16 of the FIDE World Cup 2023. Uh, we're going to see how he does, and uh, these are the uh, remaining participants of the FIDE the World Cup, so let's check it out. Uh, Magnus Carlsen will be facing none other than the Slayer of Champions, Vasily Vanchuk, who, uh, I don't know, for those of you who are maybe new to chess, uh, at one point during the Doha, uh, Qatar, uh, FIDE World Rapid and Blitz Championship, Ivanchuk actually defeated Magnus uh, two games in a row, so uh, if anyone can take down <laughs> Magnus, and anyone else for that matter, it is Vasily Vanchuk. Van Hau will be facing Gukesh, also, uh, I mean, a brutal, brutal matchup. Nijat Abasov, uh, who eliminated Peter Sviller, will be uh, facing Salem Saleh. Vidit will be facing Jan Nepomneshi, the former World Championship Challenger. Also, another former World Championship Challenger, Fabiana Caruana, will be facing the winner of the FIDE World Cup 2021, Yang Shishtov Duda, who also eliminated Magnus Carlsen in the semifinals. Uh, the uh, Lanier Dominguez Perez will be facing Alexis Sarana. Arjun Ergesi will be facing Nils Grandelius. And uh, Pregnananda, who defeated Hikaru, will be facing Ferenc Berkes. So, those are the final 16. Uh, well, I mean, it's anyone's guess uh, what will happen, but, uh, you know, uh, what is what is definitely that will happen is that
that we will be enjoying some uh, excellent chess. Uh, so yeah, uh, once again, really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, uh, very nicely done by all of them. Uh, I would like to. Uh, I would like to thank uh, my wife beats any wife at chess, Angus Cunningham, Peter Booth, Nagarjuna Ponugoti, and uh, Philip uh, Haxtenberg for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game you guys requested uh, from round one of this year's Julius Bear Generation Cup and also a very nice example of why it's called the Generation Cup. Here we have the 53 year old uh, absolute chess legend Vasily Ivanchuk is playing against 17 year old uh, Indian Grandmaster Pragnananda and uh, it is uh, well quite quite um, uh, an interesting game as it usually is when both uh, Vasil is playing and when uh, Pragnananda is playing. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, Vasil has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4 and uh, uh, just a quick heads up uh, this game features 17 moves of known theory of the Rui Lopez so let's uh, dive straight into it so pawn to e5 knight f3 knight to c6 and bishop to b5 the Rui Lopez is on the board we have a6 Morphe's defense uh, bishop to a4 and now knight to f6 we have castles and pawn to b5 now so the columbus variation of the morphe defense nothing new here bishop b3 we have bishop to c5 and now pawn to a4 we have rook to b8 and now uh, pawn to c3 we have pawn to d6 and now pawn to d4 attacking the bishop and bishop back to b6 we have knight to a3 uh, also, uh, here, a, just a captures on b5 and a5 is also played, but we've seen a5 this attempted upon sacrifice so many times on the channel uh, that I'm sure even all of you guys uh, know what this is all about. And of course, the Vassal is expecting Pregnananda uh, to know what, what it is uh, about, so he does not attempt this. He goes for the third most popular option, which is knight to a3. Uh, we have castles now uh, by Prague, a captures on b5, a captures on b5, and knight captures on b5. So he accepts the pawn sacrifice now Vasil is up a pawn uh, but Prague will have a very very active game and now uh, what's uh, what's going on with the e4 pawn of course if you capture this bishop d5 and you just blunder a knight so you can play that so here Prague just continues development bishop g4 uh, now at, at attacks the knight puts more pressure on the d4 pawn and the bishop back to c2 now defending the e4 pawn we have bishop captures on f3 and now g captures on f3 so this is all very standard stuff this position happens many many times uh, in the past knight to h5 uh, preparing to bring the queen into the game and pawn to f4 now we have queen to h4 and now f captures on e5 we have d captures on e5 and now uh, the position of course has been reached before like we've said this is move 17 uh, d5 is a known move and also bishop to e3 countering the bishop on b6 is a known move but here we have king to h1 by vassal and it is now as of move 17 that we have a completely new game so it definitely makes sense to move the king uh, uh, out of this diagonal and prepare rook to g1 to start putting pressure on the black king if you can uh, develop the queen and bishop for example play rook g1 rook g2 bring the other rook to g1 could be very good for white uh, but that's a lot of moves so here uh, Prague has to decide how to go about this does he just play e captures on d4 which is the standard way to do it probably you would do it in a classical game but this is rapid so Prague goes knight captures on d5 uh, sorry, not knight captures on d5, bishop captures on d4. Uh, we have knight captures on d4, uh, knight e captures on d4, and now c captures on d4. And now comes rook to b4, putting pressure on the d4 pawn. Uh, and now uh, how can Vassal deal with this? He plays bishop to e3. He just uh, defends the pawn. Uh, like I said, this is a rapid game, but if this was a classical game, I will show a nice line rook to g1. Uh, and now uh, the, the, it's just very hard for black to play this. For example, if rook captures on d4, you will play queen to f3. And now uh, it's uh, very hard to deal with this. Bishop to g5 is coming. Uh, and it's a very, very uh, hard position uh, to handle. Of course, you can play something like rook d6. And then if bishop g5, knight d4, attack the white queen and the bishop. Uh, very, very crazy stuff to calculate. So Vassal says, I'm not going to calculate this. I'm just going to play bishop to e3. And I'm going to play rook to g1 next. So now I don't have to worry about my d4 pawn as this would burn a lot of time so here just the rook captures on b2 Prague wins his pawn back and now rook to g1 
uh, preparing the plan that we already discussed rook g2 queen f3 rook a to g1 and then going after the black king so queen h3 and now bishop to d3 it makes sense for the bishop to move now the white queen can also move the bishop will not be a target here but also you want to play bishop f1 and kick away the black queen from such an active square so knight b4 putting pressure on the bishop and the bishop to f1 we have queen to h4 and now comes uh, queen to f3 again uh, it's a very interesting position so i will just show uh, a fun line as uh, of course here Prague is attacking the e4 pawn but also uh Prague might have some ideas of playing rook captures and just giving up the rook for this pawn and bishop completely opening up um uh, Ivanchuk's uh, kings uh, but uh, for example rook g2 is incredibly strong you just prevent rook captures on f2 and you don't care about the e4 pawn because also the the knight here would be uh, hanging and if Prague just tries to force matters uh, by, by giving up a knight let's say queen captures and knight to c2 now attacking the rook and the bishop with some ideas of bishop captures pawn captures and then you open up the uh, king side doesn't really work queen g5 goes for checkmate and after g6 just rook d1 and nothing Thing to worry about here now knight captures queen can also capture uh you're just down too much uh, material of course uh, white would be completely winning here so uh, it is possible but it's a very very uh, hard to, to calculate so Vassal just plays queen f3 he defends the pawn here and now knight to f6 we have pawn to e5 now chasing the knight away knight e4 and now bishop to e2 and this is a very important move as Prague was attacking the f2 pawn many times so here uh, by pla placing the bishop here the rook no longer attacks f2 now you're playing rook g2 rook g1 and you are going after uh, the black king so rook g2 we have pawn to h5 Prague has to figure out a way how to continue this attack because if he doesn't uh he, he he will just be worse so rook to g2 we have knight to d5 and now rook a to g1 preparing the uh, rook captures on g7 g6 by Prague and now uh, Vassal plays bishop to h6 goes after the rook uh, also you could consider a move like bishop to c4 here uh black basically resigns uh, but there is there is quite a lot to calculate the the, the knight is hanging and also just rook captures on g6 even if, even if you defend it with knight e7 uh, white can still play rook captures on g6 and if knight captures queen f5 uh, you are preparing rook captures also queen captures uh, as the f pawn is pinned also the knight is um, is attacked so not all that much uh, to do here but you could also go for rook captures and g6 right away for example uh king h7 now you play rook to h6 check king goes to g7 now rook captures and h5 very very unpleasant stuff here for uh, for black there's just no way out if knight captures and f2 just king g1 and if rook b1 check king g2 there's no way out of this uh, you, you will have to trade queens here otherwise you're getting checkmated uh for example uh captures captures now rook g5 check and also uh the knight goes um uh, and now it's uh, you will have two bishops for a rook and of course the position is completely winning for uh, uh for white but okay after g6 we have bishop to h6 going after the rook which is also fine uh rook f to b8 and now pawn to e6 by vassal uh, queen to f5 again always a possibility uh, as the the g pawn is pinned so here knight d to f6 uh, and now e captures on f7 with check king captures and bishop back to e3 uh, now again defending the f2 pawn we have g5 by Prague really just relentlessly attacking here uh, it's incredible how how Prague is keeping everything together and now uh, Vassal played rook captures on g5 and with this move he single-handedly uh, uh, delivers uh, Prague all of the advantage he had right back to him uh, because if you just play bishop captures on g5 which seems like a, a you know a reasonable idea uh, there's uh, no good reply because after knight captures you're gonna first move the bishop you don't want a bishop to hang here so just bishop c4 and after the king moves now you play rook captures on g5 and there's no saving this position if rook captures on f2 of course this is possible just rook g7 check king d8 and now you go for checkmate rook g8 check you give up the rook knight captures queen d5 check and whatever you play uh you you get checkmated king e8 rook captures with check uh rook to f8 or you move the king you are getting checkmated out of way queen f7 check here rook captures on f8 this is checkmate so uh this is uh the way to go however vassal played rook captures on g5 and it seems like it's the same idea uh but look at this proc plays knight captures on g5 uh vassal plays bishop to c4 check now expecting proc to move the king so he can capture on g5 
uh, but Prague just says, nope, knight to e6. So Prague captured on g5 with the knight, and now with that same knight, he blocks check from the bishop. Uh, this is something you would uh, see if you were playing chess in a bar. I remember when I was, uh, you know, still playing chess at bars regularly, uh, this, uh, you know, kind of thing happened very, very often. Uh, but yeah, okay. Now, uh, Vasil can still hold a draw if he, for example, captures, captures queen c6 is enough for a draw, but he goes pawn to d5. Uh, he still wants to win this game, but now Prague just picks up the bishop as well. Uh, queen captures on c4, d captures on e6 with check, queen captures on e6, and now queen to g3, hoping to get some action along the g-file, uh, but queen to c6 with check. We, we have pawn to f3 and now just rook to g8 and he was in this position on move 38 that Vasily Vanchuk resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. The queen is attacked and once you move the queen doesn't really matter where uh, you can just trade here rook captures bishop captures and as you can see um, uh, Prague is up a full rook and there is no uh, way for, for Vasily to even threaten Prague's king on f7 so of course uh, it makes sense for him to resign here. And no, Vasily wasn't low on time uh, so uh, and that's not the reason that he blundered in the final position he had like uh, or even in the position that he blundered he was like a minute up on the clock, Prague was under a minute, the Vassal was uh, over over a minute, so uh, it wasn't really a time issue, it was just a, just a, 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 a you know, a chucky moment that uh, didn't go uh, his way. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, that's the game, hope you guys enjoyed it, really nicely played by both of them, but really, you know, just uh, pure uh, uh, perseverance and resilience by Prague, just withstanding all of this pressure, and, you know, waiting for, for Vassal to make a mistake, and as soon as he made one, just, I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, here, rook captures on g5, knight captures, and then, of course, uh, in your mind, the king moves and everything is going your way, but Prague just picks up the knight and just moves it, and you're like, what, what, what did I just do? Uh, but yeah, that's chess. Uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Very nicely played by Prague. Uh, I would like to thank Matthew Garner, Luke Longbone, Joy Tyler, Laura York, uh, and Marcello De Baros for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the Hulisberg Generation Cup uh, until it finishes, most likely. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day, and use hashtag suggestion if you have a game that you would like me to cover that is very nice for others to see. Uh, see you soon! Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game also from round one of this year's Baku Open. Uh, it is a uh, uh, FIDE master from Kazakhstan, uh, Lia Kurmangalieva against uh, international master uh, from Uzbekistan, uh, Abdi Malik Abdi Salimov. And it's a really wild game as, I mean, of course it is, you guys requested it, features uh, some very uh, interesting moves, features maybe even a, a sacrifice of a very valuable piece. Uh, so uh, let's dive straight into it and see what this is about. Uh, Leah uh, has the white pieces and she opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to g6 and now pawn to d4. Just grabbing the full center, we have bishop to g7, uh, knight to c3 and d6. Going for the um, uh, modern, modern defense or, or the robash uh, and it's, uh, it's a fairly popular opening nowadays uh, even uh, amongst the top grandmasters. We have pawn to f4 and now pawn to a6. You have uh, seen this many times even on this channel. We've shown a couple of games by Magnus also uh, if you guys remember. Remember, Hikaru Nakamura won a very nice game with the black pieces with this exact same setup against Vishwanathan Anand in uh, 2018. It was a blitz game, but still a very nice game. Uh, and they continue uh, in the, uh, following that game for quite a few moves. Knight f3, we have pawn to b5, bishop to d3, and now bishop to uh, b7. Putting pressure on that e4 pawn, we have pawn to a4, and pawn to b4 as uh, black has to decide what to do with that pawn, whether to capture, whether to advance, or whether to do nothing and just wait for a capture some b5, uh, which is not great as uh, that b5 square is being uh, pressured a lot. So here, knight back to e2, and now knight to d d7. We have castles and pawn to c5. So all uh, very nicely done by both of them. Pawn to c3 and now uh, we have knight to h6. Here uh, the, in the game uh, that I mentioned, um, uh, Anand versus Nakamura, b captures and c3 was played. But here we have knight to h6 and now uh, there are a few games that reach this position. a5 is a known move, knight to g3 is a known move. Uh, but here we have pawn to h3 and it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. 
So let's see uh, how uh, he continues. After h3, we have castles, and now pawn to g4, just going all out here, not um, and not looking back. And uh, there are uh, a lot of candidate moves you could consider here. You could consider b captures on c3, you could consider c captures on d4, you could consider uh, sort of a, a king to h8, a nice... Uh, uh, a nice waiting move, improving the position of your pieces, but he goes for pawn to f5. It looks like a pawn sacrifice, but it's not. He's going to win the pawn back, and it's going to open up his dark square bishop to uh, to attack. So this is what uh, Abdi Malik wants. Uh, we have captures on f5, captures on f5, and now pawn to g5. This is how she uh, kicks away the knight to, to grab the f5 pawn. Knight to f7, bishop captures on f5, and now he just wins it back. Knight captures on g5, attacks the bishop here. The rook is now threatening to pick up the bishop. Knight captures on g5, rook captures on f5, and now knight to g3, attacking the, uh, attacking the rook. And the best way to defend is rook to f6. This keeps an eye on all the all the key squares, but he played rook to d5, and now uh, look at what happens. Queen to g4, and this is a this is a very scary move. The problem is uh, if you if black plays a uh, any move here, like uh, b captures on c3, you just get checkmated. Queen to e6 with check. Once the king moves, knight to f7 check with a monster fork here. And for those of you who are maybe new to chess, not only does black lose a queen here, he also gets checkmated with a uh, beautiful smothered mate, king to h8, knight to f7 check, king g8, and now a nice double check, knight to h6, king goes back, and now of course queen to g8, and uh, you give up the queen for this beautiful checkmate, for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, I'm sure uh, will appreciate this. So after queen to g4, uh, he, uh, he decides that he has to give some material, rook captures on g5 is played, f captures on g5, and now c captures on d4, and okay, you still have to be very careful, you want some material, uh, but um, uh, he does have the bishop pair. Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, definitely fully operational. And if he can get that knight into the game, maybe bring the queen uh, uh, somewhere to c7 to b6, rook to f8, the knight comes to e5, could be very dangerous. So here we have c captures on d4 and queen to b6. Now putting pressure on the king here. And now uh, you could play something like bishop to e3, which of course makes sense. Uh, here she goes for knight to f5. Uh, uh, which defends the the pawn here and threatens knight captures on, e, uh, on e7, amongst other things. So here we have knight to e5, attacking the queen here. Uh, the problem is if you play something like e6, and of course you can do this, you try to attack the knight, and if the knight moves, then you're going to capture on d4. The problem is there's knight to h6 check, and now you can't uh, capture, you're, you're getting checkmated, so you have to play king to h8, and now just knight to f7 check, and after the king moves, now you play bishop to e3, everything's defended, there's no real counterplay here from black. So instead, uh, knight to e5 was played, attacking the white queen here, and this is only the first pause the video moment. Uh, um, yeah, there are two very nice ones, so feel free to pause the video and try to find the only winning idea for Leah uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on really using the entire board to solve this one. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is actually pawn to a5. This is the move that solves the position. And uh, once uh, once you see it, of course, you also believe it. The problem is, uh, how do you defend? If you play something like queen g3 and just want to wait it out, uh, let's say knight to g6. How do you continue? Of course, you have to go uh, uh, bishop to e3. But now just queen to c6. And white is uh, also in... in in some trouble here. You can't really do anything. The d7 pawn is nicely defended. You don't have really a move here. And you solve all of this by playing a5 because in that line that we've just shown, black will not have queen to c6. Uh, white wins a valuable tempo and uh, everything works out very well. So now queen to a7 was played. If you play queen to c6 now, then you no longer uh, pin pin the d pawn so uh, white can just capture the knight. And uh, although it's similar to what happened in the game, it is somewhat different. Let's say queen to h1 check, king to f2, you can give a few more checks king d1 and queen captures on e5 uh, but now you just block uh, you're up a full rook of course there's no point in uh, continuing this with with black so instead queen to a7 was played and now comes queen to g3 getting the queen out of harm's way and now uh knight now knight uh, knight to g6 will be met with bishop to e3 so black uh, has to do something here he plays pawn to e6 uh, but leah just plays knight captures on g7 and how can uh, black reply here here king uh, queen captures on d4 check was played because if you uh, take the piece then bishop to e3 comes 
Uh, no longer we have to worry about this diagonal. The knight is attacked. Let's say knight g6. Now even pawn to d5. Attacking the queen. Putting pressure on e6. Once you move the queen. Then you capture here. Rook to f7 is coming. And again. A total collapse uh, for black. Uh, Abdi Malik cannot afford this. So after knight captures on g7. He played queen captures on d4 with check. Now comes bishop to e3. Attacks the queen. Queen to e4. Now going for queen to h1. Uh, but now comes knight to h5. And interestingly this is the only winning move uh, knight to h5 you have to play this now you're threatening knight to f6 check with the fork and black really has to go for uh, for this check first king to h8 was played to avoid the fork but now even now knight to f6 attacks the queen queen to h1 check king to f2 and now queen back to c6 if you continue knight to d3 check uh, king to e2 and there's no way to continue the attack so that's why uh, he goes back queen to c6 now comes rook a to d1 uh, we have rook to c8 and now rook to d2 stopping any any checks on the second rank we have queen to c4 uh, just uh, you know nicely uh, nicely controlling squares with the queen uh, and now king to g1 we have queen to c6 again going for that king to uh, queen to h1 with check but just king to h2 this avoids everything we have rook to c7 controlling the seventh rank uh, but now for the second and last time feel free to pause the video and win the game for Leah uh, while I give you a couple of seconds so uh, for those of you who were able to do it congratulations on solving uh well if you solve the first one then big congratulations on solving the second one as well but even if you didn't solve the first one this one is quite nice so congratulations on uh you know giving giving it your best uh and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show it is of course queen captures on e5 this is how she finishes the game and it's quite a beautiful way to finish it uh, at that there's no good way to reply here like you could play something like queen to g2 to, to you know be uh, funny about it and maybe to prolong the game a little bit uh, but d captures on e5 was played and now comes rook to d8 with check uh, you don't have a move you, uh, you could give up the queen which is silly so king to g7 was played now comes uh, you don't want to mess up the game with rook to g8 to check it seems like it solves all of your problems but king to f7 and now you no longer have a have a checkmate uh, and uh, you will you will be losing this game so here knight to h5 check was played this is the only way to, uh, to, to checkmate the black king king to g6 now comes rook to f6 with check and he was in this position on move 36 that abdi malik abdi salimov resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here the only move he has for his king is king captures on h5 which would be met with alias uh, rook to h6 checkmate and this would be uh, the, the the final position of the game so really uh, an awesome game uh, really really tricky stuff if you play the robot you have to be prepared for everything he is uh, well he's much higher rated than her, her so of course he wanted to, to have an active game to uh, increase his winning chances but it didn't really uh, work out uh, and in the end he had to give up the exchange and then he even uh, blundered the, the well not blundered it was a it was a bad position and then he just had to you know play something and then queen captures on e5 just a spectacular way to finish the game uh, so yeah uh, there we have it hope you guys enjoyed it uh, another very nice game from one uh, round one of this year's uh, Baku Open if you have any other games that you would like to see covered use hashtag suggestion in the comments uh, I will go over them and if it uh, you know uh, seems like something that people will enjoy and of course if I enjoy it then I will go over it for for everyone else to enjoy uh, so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it uh, I would like to thank uh, Russell Jack Wesley Carter Mark Butsakaki uh, Keith Tester and Edmund Freeman for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you for watching and I will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world so thank you all I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day Hello everyone and welcome to the first game we'll be showing from the uh, Julius Bear Generations Cup. It is the 7th of 9 events of uh, the uh, 1.6 million dollar Smeltwater Champions Chess Tour. And it's uh, Arjun Erigaisi versus Magnus Carlsen. So Magnus is back and for those of you who are wondering and I know everyone will be asking this uh, in the comments. When is Magnus uh, playing Hans? Uh, Magnus is playing Hans in round 6 of the preliminaries. And then uh, we'll see, we'll take it from there. Uh, if the if the game happens uh, so let's dive straight into it it's a very cool, uh, quick game uh, so uh, you know uh, don't blink 
Uh, Arjun has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4 and Magnus already with a nice surprise pawn to g6. The modern defense, the Robach defense, um, he has played it before and of course uh, when you're facing Magnus you have to be ready for it. We have d6, uh, uh, d4, d6, knight to c3 and now bishop to g7. Uh, we have bishop to e3 and now pawn to a6. You can see very, very modern stuff happening here. Queen to d2. At some point, you might be interested in trading off the dark square bishops. And now pawn to b5. Magnus really playing with those pawns. Uh, pawn to f3 and now knight to d7. Uh, having uh, c5 and d5 uh, ready to be fired up. We have h4 and now knight g2 f6. We have castles queen side. And now pawn to h5. Uh, not allowing any quick g4 or h5 g5 uh, attacking sequences so here pawn to e5 and now if black had to retreat then of course white would be very happy even e6 is an idea so magnus goes forward pawn to b4 as one usually does uh, in every position and here uh, the position is a known one knight to e4 is a known move and also knight to a4 is a known move and those are okay but knight to b1 is a new move so already as of move 10 we have a completely new game but after this move it uh, uh, it, it is kind of hard to defend white's position and the magnus will now demonstrate why uh knight to d5 now putting pressure on the uh, on the bishop and also just getting ready to uh, start pushing those pawns bishop to g5 now preparing uh, if, if something like c, uh, c5 then you can capture here the d pawn is pinned so knight 7 to b6 uh, and we have rook to e1 as uh Carlson's king is still in the center of the board it does make sense to uh, prepare uh, an attack against him or, or even just force him to castle king side uh, or, which he doesn't he goes just bishop to e6 he wants to attack uh, arjun's queen side and now pawn to f4 now it's interesting that uh, white already played the d4 e5 f4 h4 but it's very 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 hard to attack black's uh, setup uh, when uh, when executed uh, in, in this way even with the black king still in the center of the board you, uh, board you can't just push something so here we have queen to d7 by magnus now getting ready to start pushing that pawn and also queen to a4 is is a move at some point we have bishop to d3 uh, and now pawn to a5 we have queen to e2 here it's not easy to find the move for white like i said you really want to push some pawns but there really aren't any good pawn pushes f5 is covered and also g4 is covered so how are you breaking through here the the fact of the matter is you are not and here arjun plays queen to e2 and this is something that you should remember for your own games uh when you've castled queen side in uh, structures like these it's uh well it's sort of maybe you you could have this like in a uh, in a knight or with opposite side castles okay if, if, if c5 c captures on d4 was played some Something similar but if the queen is on e2 uh, magnus gets a great idea he castles queen side the point is you can't really uh, start c5 c5 bishop b5 and uh, okay you blunder your queen so magnus castles queen side and now we have knight to f3 arjun continues development king to b8 and now knight b to d2 we have queen to a4 now putting pressure on the a2 pawn and the white is without a good reply here the problem is if king to b1 uh that's why i said uh always be mindful of placing your queen on e2 in such positions just knight to c3 check that's the problem uh, now you have to capture and once you capture just queen a3 and you're getting checkmated knight a4 and queen to b2 will be checkmated there's no good way uh, to stop this uh, however you try it's just not possible you might uh, uh, i mean e even knight here to guard this just bishop captures it and th th there's no way, way to survive so instead arjun plays e captures on d6 we have c captures on d6 and now bishop captures on g6 hoping of course for captures and then queen captures on e6 uh, but magnus just plays queen captures on a2 uh, we have pawn to f5 uh, uh, attacking the bishop here but just knight to a4 not uh, uh, worrying about that going after the b2 pawn so knight to e4 freeing up the d2 square for the white king but just queen captures on b2 we have king to d2 knight a to c3 now attacking the white queen queen d3 and now bishop d7 going for bishop to b5 uh, and that's it there is no way to save the white queen uh, bishop captures on f7 is played but just bishop to b5 and that's it queen captures on b5 was played knight captures bishop captures on d5 but now just knight captures on d4 and he was in this position on move 26 that arjun ergesi resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here uh, once you try something uh, it's very hard to 
find the move you, you can actually play. C2 is hanging. Let's say knight captures, queen captures with check. You, you lose the bishop, so there's really not all that much you can do. You can defend with rook to C1, but just rook to C8. Uh, you're going to pile up on that pawn, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so yeah, nicely played by uh, by Arjun, but uh, uh, it's hard to say if this was, uh, uh, you know, if he messed up the preparation as, um, like I said, knight e4 and knight a4 are, are the known moves that actually work in this position for white, uh, or did Magnus just uh, not fall for any any trick in the in the preparation? Uh, whatever the case, uh, very nicely uh, played by Magnus. He took advantage of the of the only opportunity basically Arjun gave him and did not let go for the for the rest of the game. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you guys uh, for watching. Uh, I would like to thank Matthew Gardner, Luke Longbone, uh, Joy Tyler, uh, Laura York, and Marcello DeBarros for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of this uh, very nice tournament. Until it finishes, do you sh use hashtag suggestion if you guys uh, are interested in checking out some games. I already have some nice suggestions for the uh, um, Pragnanda versus uh, Ivanchu game, so stay tuned for that as well uh but yeah it's pretty much it hope you guys enjoyed it uh see you soon and uh well ha ha have an uh, excellent rest of your day or or evening Hello everyone and welcome to a great game from round one of this year's FIDE World Cup. I was going over the games and I was looking for one to really uh, dazzle you guys. Uh, this one is very special as it features a move uh, uh, simply both of the Grandmasters missed. It's not an easy move to find and you guys will have a, a really hard time spotting this one. Uh, but I thought it would make a great pause the video moment and uh, it's uh, it really uh, makes you think outside of the box to figure out this one. So Indian Grandmaster Harsha Bharatakoti versus uh, Canadian Grandmaster Levan Pansulaya. Uh, we've covered a lot of games by Harsha Bartakoti, but I think we've only covered one by Levan. It was uh, a few years ago he defeated Magnus Carlsen. Can't really remember where it could be the World Rapid Championship or something like that, but uh, uh, obviously uh, 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 definitely a strong player. Now, uh, that being said, uh, let's check it out. We have pawn to d4 by Harsha Barakatakoti and now pawn to g6. Levan goes for the modern defense. We've discussed it a few uh, days ago uh, when Fischer was playing against the, the, the creator of the modern defense. You, of course, know who that is. Pawn to c4. We have pawn, bishop to g7 and now pawn to e4. We have pawn to d6, uh, the standard setup of the modern defense, and now knight to c3. We have c5 and now pawn to d5. Uh, attacking the uh, the third actal defense with uh, with the um, sort of the Benoni gambit, uh, trying to get black to capture on c3, and it's not the most common move you will see here. There are many moves that can be played here, like you go a6, b5, e6, knight to f6. Like all of these are very natural moves, knight to d7. But bishop captures on c3 check is uh, actually the fourth mo fourth most popular move in this position, and you should know it. I remember uh, the, it was a long, long time ago, maybe 11 years ago, we were playing the creation team championship and uh, we helped our board one prepare for his match on board one and uh, of course he knew that uh, the uh, i don't know he who he was playing against uh, with the white pieces maybe be um, yeah, I think it was maybe feeding master and Nenat Farouth, or I, I could be wrong, but I think it was against him. And he was playing this with the white piece, and we prepared this uh, funky line with bishop captures on c3. And he was, uh, well, he was really caught off guard with this bishop captures on c3 move because you don't expect uh, a player with the black pieces to just part with his uh, strong bishop with his dragon. And um, uh, it, uh, and uh, chances are you you've never played against that. In the end, uh, our uh, board one lost the game, but he uh, really really had him uh, struggling. He spent like uh, he he was down to a few minutes on the clock. Uh, our board one had over an hour and a half, and then he just blundered terribly, as it usually happens. But okay, B captures on C3, and now pawn to E5. So you got rid of your dark square bishops, uh, bishop. But now your opponent will have uh, some problem uh, developing his own light square bishop with all of his pawns on light squares. So bishop to d3, we have knight to d7, and now pawn to f4. And there is a game where e captures on f4 was played, but here we have queen to f6, and it is now as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so how do you react to this? Of course, uh, Levan wants to capture on f4 to put pressure on c3. So uh, Baratakoti just plays knight to e2, guards the c3 pawn. 
Queen to h4 with check and now g3. This does somewhat weaken white's kingside even further. Uh, but you know, uh, for example, if you've played the king's gambit, that this doesn't really offer black that much. Uh, queen to e7, we have castles and now pawn to h5. You've created a weakness and now you want to hone in on that weakness um, and attack it. We have pawn to f5. You can already see it's move 12, but this is not a friendly game. This is already quite to the battle. Uh, G captures on f5, E captures and now pawn to f6. Uh, usually a very dangerous move to play, but here you just close the position and uh, say, okay, my king will remain here. I'm gonna weaken your center with b5, and then I'm gonna play h4 at some point and really put pressure on your uh, on your king. And uh, the engine really loves rook d1 move here, but uh, unless you're an engine, you don't play rook d1. I, I, I try to understand what the engine wants with rook d1, I just have no idea. Maybe rook e1 to e4 to maybe guard against pawn to h4 in the future, but other than that, uh, it's really... Hard to, hard to understand the move. So here, king to h1 was played. It's a very nice human move, clearing the g1 square for the knight. The idea is, of course, knight g1 to f3, to h4, and then to g6 at some point, if, uh, of course, you allow it. Uh, we have uh, queen to g7, and now knight to g1, uh, preparing the knight's journey. We have knight to e7, and now knight to f3. And here, just queen to g4. Uh, it's a very annoying um, uh, square for, for, for white to have the black queen on. Bishop back to e2. You can't just wait here. If you just wait here and do nothing, b5 is coming and then white will just be under a, lo a whole lot of pressure. So here we have bishop to e2, now threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries, and you can't just ignore this. You have to play, uh, either, either move the queen to e4 or capture on f5. If you just continue with your plan, knight g4 uh, traps the queen and that's it. Uh, black loses the game. So after bishop to e2, we have queen captures on f5. Uh, Levan uh, accepts the challenge, knight to g5 now, uh, putting pressure on that black queen, and queen to g6. We have knight to e6, a beautiful square for the knight, but not um, uh, attacking all that much. Okay, you will play a knight to c7 with check, but black is very happy giving up the inactive rook for the active knight, and also for a chance to attack uh, white's king side. So, knight to b6, and now we have bishop to d3. Here, you might be thinking, okay, how do we continue here? As it's a classical game, I'm just going to show you a few few fun lines. Let's say bishop captures on h5. If rook captures, queen captures. And now, of course, if queen captures, you're going to deliver knight to g6, a uh, knight to g7 check and pick up the queen. So you're probably going to play bishop captures on e6. And now we will see queen captures on g6, knight captures, d captures on e6, and then king to e7. And you're going to pick up that e6 pawn with a fairly equal game. Uh, on the other hand, you could also consider knight to c7 check right away. Let's say king d8, knight captures on a8, knight captures and now just bishop to d3 to be uh, very annoying here. Uh, or you could play what uh, Harsha Barakatakoti played right away, and that is bishop to d3. And now, how do you react to this? Well, of course, you could move the queen, but where are you going to move the queen to? Queen to g4 does look like something, but uh, okay, then, then you force a queen trade. Black really doesn't want to force a queen trade here. Black wants to keep the center closed and attack the white king. So you might consider something like pawn to f5, but uh, then rook captures, uh, not looking all that great. The only other move is pawn to e4, which is what the 11 played. Now comes knight to c7 check. King to d8 and knight captures on a8. And this is the critical moment of the game uh, where you have so many options. Uh, I, you can already see that uh, the, the knight can be captured, the bishop can be captured. Uh, what would you play in this position? It's such a such a tricky one. Uh, feel free to pause the video and try to try to find uh, you know a, a plan for black here. How would you proceed? Well, I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on going uh, against your basic urge to recapture. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is not knight captures on a8. It is not pawn captures on d3, although you can play that. It is actually pawn to h4. This is the strongest move for black. And uh, the reason is, of course, uh, how, do you, how do you defend against pawn captures here? Well, one way to do it, and pretty much the only way to do it, is rook to f4. Now... 
how, how how do you react to this? Well, point is that if h captures on g3 now, you're going to play bishop captures and attack the black queen here. But even though this isn't very impressive, rook captures on h2 with check, king to g1. And now how do you, okay, your queen is still hanging. You can play something like bishop to f5. Uh, and now, okay, let's say even rook captures on f5, knight captures, and now rook to b1. You, you've survived the attack, but chances are you will get checkmated here. Uh, but you don't even play that. After rook to f4, there's even a nicer way to play, and that is e captures on d3. And now, after knight captures on b6, you will play a captures on b6. You will even allow pawn to g4. Uh, it's sort of a, a not a tactical way to crush white, but a positional way to crush white. And now you will prevent white from playing h3. You will play h3 yourself. Uh, and now you will go after that uh, g4 pawn. If bishop to d2, you will just prepare it, rook to g8. And now whatever white plays, let's say queen to f1, you put some pressure here, it doesn't really matter. Bishop captures on g4, and uh, rook captures on f6 uh, is impossible now because queen to e4 with check, and you will get checkmated now very soon. Uh, you have to go to g1, and then you go under the mask of the of the rook. So of course, that's not, uh, not happening. So rook to e1 can be played, but now you just continue with queen to h5, and white is basically without a move. So just completely crushing white positionally. Uh, even bishop to e2 might happen. Uh, so white will play something like rook to e3 to prevent bishop to e2 because then queen captures on h3 is possible. But now you just continue with your basic plan, which is to push the pawn to b5. That was your plan all along. And if rook captures on d3, you play b captures on c4. Now take away all the squares from the rook. And if rook to g3, now queen captures on d5 check. King g1 and f5. And that's it. Black is pretty much without uh, a move. The bishop helpless. The rooks can't go anywhere. Uh, also the queen, not, uh, not a lot of squares for that queen. Uh, you can play the king to c7, get the rook to d8, push the pawn here. You could also get the knight into the game uh, very nicely. Let's say knight g6 to e5 to d3. It will be a beautiful outpost for the knight. This is just dead loss for white. Um, uh, so you, you, you basically choose how you want to do it. But in the game, it wasn't played. E captures on d3 wasn't played, which is also very nice. In the game, knight captures on a8 was played, and this allows white back into the game. Bishop to e2. And now pawn to h4 just isn't as potent because here... Uh, you can play g4 and if h3 you can play bishop to f4 now already with the threat of bishop captures on d6 and if king to c7 you can just play queen to c1 uh, and you don't have to worry about anything if rook to g8 trying to go after the g4 pawn even queen to a3 now with threats of queen a7 or, or even queen captures on c5 as the d6 pawn is pinned uh, black is just getting destroyed here so here bishop to h3 was played attacking the rook rook g1 and now knight to b6 but now we have bishop to f4 putting pressure on the pawn here so f5 defending it with the queen and now rook to b1 preparing to uh, well basically the idea is just queen b3 and you play a4 a5 kick away the knight and capture on b7 so king c7 trying to add some defenders there but it doesn't help queen to b3 we have knight e to c8 and now pawn to a4 a5 will dislodge the knight and then b7 just uh, sorry about that b7 just hangs bishop to g4 and now bishop captures and g4 h captures although it opens up the h file isn't all that impressive just a5 you're you're not in time to organize anything on the king side so queen captures on g4 was played maybe with some ideas of queen f3 check uh, but um, uh, harsha just shows that it doesn't really matter a5 now queen f3 okay you could play this and uh, maybe even attack the white king a little bit but it uh, it, it blunder i mean not doesn't blunder it loses a piece and you will not gain anything for your attack even just a nice king to g1 to prevent this from uh, coming with a pin and if h captures h captures you will play queen h5 there will be one check but that's all there is uh queen a2 can be played uh, now a nice check king to f2 the queen is hanging once the queen goes back you move the queen offer a trade you're up a piece completely winning so after a5 knight to d7 was played now comes queen captures on b7 with check king to d8 and now rook b to f1 Stopping queen f3, uh, we have pawn to e3 trying to get that pass pawn up the board, uh, but now queen to b1. And now, okay, if you play e2, just rook to f2 and the pawn will fall. So after queen to b2, rook to e8 was played, but now just rook to e1. We have pawn to e2, rook to g2, and here one last trick. 
queen to f3. Now, although uh, you cannot uh, move the the g rook, you could play rook captures on e1, but uh, rook captures on e2. But this would be a terrible blunder because of queen to f1 check. Rook now has the block, and then you capture the rook here. And now, of course, uh, you are up a full piece and completely winning. But in the game, of course, king to g1 was played, and now queen to d3, and of course, rook g captures on e2. We have rook to g8 trying to create some sort of a uh tricky position here but it doesn't work queen to b7 we have queen captures on c3 and bishop to g5 with check rook captures in making it impossible due to rook to e8 checkmate so knight to f6 was played but now just queen to f7 and he was in this position uh, on move 40 that levin pancelaya resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here you have too many too many threats here whatever you play you're just gonna get checkmated very quickly uh and even if you just give one more check after king to h1 there are no more checks and now you will have to well there, there, there's absolutely nothing you can do like any move you play uh, it's hard to even imagine a move here I mean just bishop captures check now picks up the queen uh, so yeah any move would really be pointless here for black so really a brilliant brilliant victory for Harsha Baratakoti but in this position after knight captures an eight was played he did allow pawn to h4 but you've seen just how complicated it is and you really really have to uh, study the position deeply in order to find all of the ideas that were possible here uh, but in the next game, uh, Levan Pancelaya retaliated with the white pieces, uh, creating an even faster uh, win. He won in 31 moves, so they will have to settle it in tie breaks, and then we will see who will proceed to round two to face... Um some of the other players who have won their encounter and also some of the players will be uh, paired with those in the top 50 who were seeded straight into round two of the FIDE World Cup 2023. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, once again, huge congratulations for not going after the knight or the bishop and even considering pawn to h4, that truly you know shows that you have what it takes to be a great player. Uh, I would like to thank all the games are best. Len Herbert, uh, Seth Harper, Schlercher, and Paul Harris for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup um, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.